Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video we have for you game 2 of a best of 3 between Onord and Kurz in the 3rd place final of the Division 1 Season 9 playoffs of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Tannenberg and on our left in the red team playing on the allied side we have Kurz using the maneuver group Bazookli with the Vanguard deployment type. And on our right in the blue team, also playing on the allied side, we have Onord using the Reserve 43rd and the Maverick deployment type. So yes, we have an allied versus allied matchup. You can you can leave your comments in disgust below. That's totally fine. We love you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we we don't have control over it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so Onord, one nil up in this series. Uh, what do you think of these divisions? I like 43rd Army Reserve personally. I, I actually really enjoy the division. Now, it does have very significant weakness, weaknesses. It only has 85 mils for AA, which can be easily counter-batteried and kind of overwhelmed quite easily. Its artillery is essentially non-existent. Uh, I think it just gets mortars. So, But tank tab, very strong. Infantry, very, very strong uh, with your uh, fanatical Strafniki and stuff. So some very strong, like big strengths and huge weaknesses make this division a really interesting one. Uh, Group Bazoogly, not a fan of it personally. It kind of just falls into the basket of of Soviet divisions for me that kind of do similar things. It's not a bad division. Definitely no stretch there. It's got some Axis. I, I believe it has some Axis uh, equipment and stuff to work with, which can be interesting. And, and it's got a good set of infantry and things like that. So definitely solid. Uh, yeah, I mean, interesting choices for these maps. I think you, this um, Tannenberg is always interesting because you have this middle area, which has to be all CQC. And then you have these outer areas, which are very you know, long range up here in the north and then kind of medium range, but also with some weird long range down in the south. So it's a, I like this map actually. I think it's quite fun. Yeah, there's a lot of different terrains that you've got to fight over. It's very nice. Uh, I, I kind of feel like Bazookly may be potential counter pick for 43rd due to the air disparity because Bazookly does rely a lot on the IL2s and 43rd's AA is a bit trash. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if, the, if he maybe takes advantage of that. But otherwise, uh, as you mentioned, the early axis armor could be pretty useful uh the su88 being the nashorn and uh, also some tigers potentially and you can also match them up with the su122 uh, that you get with bazooka which gives you some 2000 meter range he so let's have a quick look at what's going down uh, on the top side here for kurz he has a t3476 with an su76 with an ob and one of those su122s with a tanko and strafniki further down we've got uh, ob's with the su43 Three Strafniki, Panzerschreck, and the Tanko. Panzerschreck, another example of the Axis units you can get. Um, Tankos, Visivod, Sapode, Storaki SVT for the center, double SG 43 for the bottom side with an SU 76 and the Cherno. On the side of Onord, we have the SG 43s on the top with the PTRS 45 Moe T gun and some more Chernos there. We've got the PTRS SG Cherno on the second road further down, have more Chernos with the PTRS. Uh, SG-43 PTRS and on the bottom side a large commitment 45mm double PTRS Strafniki uh, with those fanatical trait with the T-34-85-1943 and 85mm AA at the start with the KV-1S. So looks like PTRS is or like Onord here uh, gonna be trying to faint hold on the top side and make a big push on the bottom side. Yeah nice to um Nice to see Kurds get back to his vanguard self. I think he plays this income really well, so I'm interested to see how he's doing uh, with it here. PTRS is oh, getting some kills up north already, killing off some things in transports here. Will they hit that tanko and weaken those? We'll see. Nope, the miss, it's too stressed. Nope, they don't kill that in time. Yeah, it being in a half track is, is nice in that scenario because the PTRS just doesn't really have the time to kill it. Uh, but he did take out the Panzer Trek, which was nice, and the SU-122 going to stop the... Uh, PTRS from getting on top of the OB and the <laughs> PTRS that was rushing on the bottom side gets taken out by the VZV before it unloads. Uh, but yeah, Kurz here on the bottom side, uh, very, very light on his deployment. Uh, so it looks like Kurz is heavy hitting the top and Onord's heavy hitting the bottom. So we'll have to see how this works out. IL-2 KR coming in, the recon IL-2 for a strafing run onto this SG-43 early on. Let's see how this IL-2 does. I, I have had limited success since their nerf way back when, but they can be quite good if they're unharassed. And 
yeah, they can be a very solid choice depending on the situation. These SG-43s up north getting broken down by all these OB-25s. OB-25s are so great. They're just, like, so, so great. Yeah, and also with the support of the SU-122 and the SU-76, uh, those MGs not really going to be able to hold. The 45mm AT gun will struggle to kill that stuff up there as well. But we've got a Yak-9B coming in to accompany the IL-2, so plenty of sight here for this bombing strike. Should be able to get a nice hit here onto this infantry. Oh. Oh, Ooh, wow. <laughs> that was a beautiful bobby strike. Strap Niki and the tank goes going down. IL-2 comes in, kills the OB as well. Nice set of runs there for O'Nord. Going to hold back the wave on the top side while he continues to make his push on the bottom. Yeah, that was absolutely devastating. Those Yak-9 with the with the four 100 kilogram bombs, they, they are quite deadly. They put down a lot of damage. Yeah, especially when they hit a perfect infantry blob like that. Oh, um, man. SG-43 is going to get taken out by the Strafniki on the bottom side. SU-76 did manage to take out, I think that was a MG. It was a PTRS, actually. Oh, okay. This KV-1S should be able to kill it quite safely. It has, oh, well, no, actually it's a little less armored than I thought it was. So it's a dangerous to go up against an SU-76 that close. Yeah, it's a bit of a dice roll, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him commit once this 45 mil gets... Uh, line of sight. Finally, AA coming in for Kurs. He's got his M15 on the field. But that Yak 9 going to get a nice bombing strike onto the Straf. And I like how Onord's focusing down the Strafniki early on because Kurs doesn't get that many of them and they can be very, very annoying to get rid of over time. So just focusing those, getting them out of the way, means that these Chernos are going to do just a little bit better, holding back the enemy for the time being. Yeah, do you get? I forget if you get one card or two card in Bazoogly of Strafniki. It's just one. Their infantry tab is a little bit anemic. Yeah, outside of the Strafniki. Now down south, the Nord making a big opening here. Took out the Su-76 successfully. There are straf some Strafniki coming in, T-34-76, but that's probably the end of the Strafniki based on uh, having only one card in A phase. T-3045 going to take out this T-34-76 quite easily. Shouldn't be any question of how this turns out. Yep, there we go. But the T-3045 is out of position. Well, unless... Can it see that transport? Ooh. Oh, now yep. it can. Yeah, now it definitely can. Close unload there for Kurs. But the Su-88 is on its way, the Nazhorn. And I think uh, Kurs here has a plan of holding that T-34 at range. Because it is 1943, so 1,700 meter range uh, versus the 2,000 meter range of the Su-88. So if you can get line of sight, that might work out. Kurz definitely still developing his position on the top side, even after the losses of a few infantry pieces. We've got to remember that he is on Vanguard income, so he will have the advantage for, say, like the first 12 to 13 Ooh. minutes, but not if he loses another T-34-76 yeah. <laughs> to oh, the yeah, T-34-85 of Onord. Now, I will say, I, I'm surprised he, he has Tankos and Sapperty here in the middle. I, he needs to get pushing on these things. I mean, obviously he doesn't know there's only Chernos there, but, I mean... 43rd Reserve doesn't have, like, a a ton of CQC stuff. They have the Strafniki officers that are really strong, and I think Zappery, but not much other than that. So it's like, I, I'd be getting rolling here. They're just sitting. It's a free flag, basically. Yeah, Boston comes in on the bottom side of that town there, but three-star Straf going to barely take any damage from eight 100 kilogram bombs, mind you. Um, the SU-122... Be trying to hold the road on the top side with the support of the T 34 76. Trying to stop Onord from getting more infantry in here because if he can get to the edge of the town, he's gonna just control like three flags here. But yeah, as you mentioned, if the tankos and the sapper here were pushing forwards, they'd just find that Cherno and take free free ground. Yeah, and especially once you see this oh, the Strafni gets hit by a Yak 9B, big hit there, gonna lose this little pocket he just grabbed. Uh, the other thing is, too, this SU-88 is going to get a little too close. He is backing it up now, so that's good. But he's backwards, so if he runs into this any of these tanks before he gets in position, it could be bad. But Onord getting his tanks hidden up there quite well. Kurz really needs to get this M15 forwards as well. Um, it seems like yeah. he's not being as proactive as he maybe should be. That M15 could really stop these Yak bombing strikes if it was far enough up. 
or at least make them less accurate so they're not just completely chunking the Strafniki squads because every time one of these is coming in and bombing it's taking the Strafniki down to like four or five men and that is just making them completely ineffective as opposed to the full 20 strength squads they are supposed to be. Yeah, it's turning them into normal infantry and that's not what you want them to be. And now the SU-122 trying to chunk the strat on the bottom side. Cherno is now coming in to hold the line there. I, I gotta ask, I know it's out of like the action here, but there's a Strelke SVT on Kurz's side that has the strangest order thing I have ever seen. Where is that? Look towards the back in the middle. There's one Strelke SVT walking around and he's got 15 move orders in a weird pattern. Oh, I think it's probably because he maybe didn't see that he killed the PTRS squad. So he might be looking for it. That's probably one of those. That's a lot of effort to put that many attack moves down. <laughs> yeah. SU-122. SU-122 actually gets killed off by the KV-1S. What a kill there. At close range, it's SU-122 is going to struggle to aim fast enough. Uh, but if the SU-122 got a shot off at that range, the KV-1S oh, yeah. was definitely dead due to that heat round having some seriously high penetration. We have more Sapperty moving into the middle here from Kurz. He, he continues to build, but not do anything. I mean, triple star tankos would do quite well against basically anything, I'd think. Both players with Chernos, which is funny. The uh, blobs of Cherno squads finally moving forward for Kurz down south. Another SU-122, but the southern flag, the weakness revealed here. Two Chernos just grabbing this flag for free, basically. On the very bottom side, yeah. Managed yeah, to push yeah. all the way down there with those units and catch that. Now the KV-1S fighting an OB in the town on the top side. Unfortunately, the heat round's not really doing much, and the KV-1S finds the kill. And uh, now I think uh, Kurz here not in a great position because doesn't have much to deal with the KV-1S and the T-34-85. And the bomber's still coming in. Yak-9 probably going to get this strike off because the M-15's still not far enough forwards. Separately, down in one strike. Now there's a second one. It looks like Kurz is finally moving in the center. My goodness. That was, a, that was a flag he left there for quite a while. These Strafniki officers are so strong at range. They just do so much damage. Yep, and the high veterancy helping out a lot. Journey is not going to get close. Uh, but it will reveal the Strafniki for the SU-122 and the OB to engage. So that's kind of what they're there for. Just fodder. They push yep. forwards into enemy troops to reveal their, loot, their positions. Uh, T-34-76 though, yep, yeah, untrouble. Yeah. <laughs> Gets taken out. That's rough. That's really rough. 45 mils are amazing. These are so... If you're not taking these, you're doing it wrong. For 35 points, these kill way more tanks than they should. They're an incredible, incredibly efficient unit. Yeah, now Kurz investing extra into this problem side engagement, getting the T-34-1942 and the T-34-76 Vajotka in. I'm surprised that he's not like doubling down on the top to grab this town because as the vanguard player like he really needs to take the initiative in the map rather than like react to the play that Gonzo or oh, sorry not, not Gonzo Onord has made <laughs> on the bottom side of the map like so Onord obviously invested heavily into making this push on the bottom side and Kurz made investment heavily into the top side and I think Kurz benefits more from taking the position that he initially went for uh, so that he can then, for the rest of the phase A or, and into the early phase B, uh, take advantage of his income to make ground elsewhere and then hold for the rest of the game. Um, but we're, we've only been really at like a 13-10. O'Nord's actually had the advantage for the majority of the game, and we're now into phase B, so O'Nord's income is going to start to come online. Yeah, we see he's going to grab the center flag here. We do see two uh, Tiger in. The T-3045 down south did go down. Boston coming in, Yak-9B as well, but there's no AA from Kurz down south. He's got plenty up north, but the Yak's coming in totally unbothered, going after this T-30... Oh, no, change target to the SU-122. Strafniki going down. And, and nice they Boston take out kill. Boston. Yeah. Now this Yak's going to just find itself a free target as well, although the 37 mil of Kurz is going to be on its way. I reckon the Yak can probably get off its bombing strike before that unloads. We do have a big sailing, so we're now at a 15-9 for Kurz. This is this is what he needed. Uh, KV-1 gets gun jammed as well. I don't know how long that's been there. I just didn't notice it now. Some Tankos and Strafniki officers moving in. Those guys are quite dangerous at close range, and that's where they're at right now. Two T-3045s for 
uh, a Nord, so the Tiger can definitely deal with those, but at very close range like this, it's really a coin flip. Indeed, and the Strauchy SVT in a bad spot on top of that flag, getting forced off it, takes it back to 13-11, SG-43 further back oh. as well as causing a salient here in the Strauchy SVT taken out by the Yak-9. On the bottom side, Kurz is starting to recover against the Cherno down here to take back that flag, but... Uh, yeah, unfortunately the salient because I wouldn't say overextended in the middle, but having that one oh. SG there from no Nord is like yeah. so annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 super obnoxious. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's obviously why you do it, but like, they're okay, so it does go down. The SU122 getting a nice single shot there should bubble this down. I, he's still not gonna get the flag in the town though. He's just gonna pick up this one, which keeps him away from the 159 T3485 going after that SU122. Curse is not noticed yet. This is bad. He really needs this for support. And, ooh, he missed. He's got another chance to get away. Still not moving. Oh, no. Where was this? Sorry. Down south. SU-122 just died to the T-3485 of Onord. Oh. Uh, so losing that support there definitely really is unfortunate. Onord is very thin down south. Like, he doesn't have much. And now we have another big salient in the middle ooh. here for Kurz at a 16-8. Big chunk here. Somehow... Kurz managed to get the PTRD on target of this half truck that was being a right pest. And he's managed to <laughs> kill off all of the extra infantry because he just has superior infantry here at the moment. And taking those two extra flags, yeah, 18 to 6 is a triple tick. That's nice. Yeah, this is, uh, Kurz is on it. He's doing it. Oh, Studebaker goes down. That's I don't know what so was good. in it, but it's dead. <laughs> now he's saying, <laughs> no, what was in it, but it's gone. This 37 mil once again pretty far back. It is managed. It does manage to push off the IL 2KR, but it does not stop the bombing run. Oh, up north M15 goes down to the 45 mil again. Oh my God! This 35 point unit just scored over 100 points of kills. That's so gross. Yeah, he finally moves it far enough forwards, but doesn't keep it out of line of sight. <laughs> this is, is your fault, Vulcan. This is your fault. <laughs> unfortunate. Now we got Onord coming in with the counter infantry play in the center. He's got Sabari rocks and the. Uh, tankos there that is a potent combination yeah i mean the both sapri squads are at full health so at least one of them should be able to get a grenade off into their face i yeah, mean you got the molotov plus the flamer follow-up which is going to keep them moving so they won't get their he off if it were just one or the other then it's really bad yeah the play is to throw your tanko in first get the molotov thrown and then throw your sapris in so you have a chance to go after the flamer unit up north, though, double tanks pushing forward, falling back again. SU-76 actually brawls okay at this range. Uh, it's going to have a hard time against the, 80, the 3485, but the uh, the T-34 definitely, 76 can definitely die there. Yak actually gets forced off finally because the M-15 is far forward enough, but we're still at an 18-6. I mean, the triple tick is happening. Six minutes left here for Nord. This is exciting. Straff has managed to get onto the flag of the T-junction in the bottom, bottom side of the town on the bottom side. Uh, Kerr's still controlling this forest for the time being, but the Tanko Sapadirox moving in. It, it, it's going to be an interesting one. It, it really comes down to whether or not Kerr's can break down these like armored pieces in the towns. Like if he could pick off like the T3485 on the top side, or, or the, maybe even the KV1S, or on the bottom side get rid of like the KV1S or the T3485 9044, that would be a big help. But here, the Sapari Rocks taking care of one of the Sapari. Tanko's going to soak the HE. Now the Sapari Rocks should beat the Sapari at close range. Kurz knows it's coming, but the two vet Sapari Rocks going to be able to run faster than the Sapari. Oh, Yak-9B down south, chunking that strap. Niki squad again, that 37 mil. I mean, you can't move it up much further. In Kurz's defense this time, you're already at a very dangerous location, like out in the open there. Much further now. Down south, Kurz, though. Ooh, trying to pick up a cheeky flag. Gets taken out by the T-3485. Oh, that's unfortunate. We're now seeing an IS-2 on the field on the bottom side. That's going to be kind of difficult for Kurz to deal with. He does have the Nazhorn on the bottom side of the map, so he can maybe use that to pick it off. But if the IS-2 lands those fateful 35% hits at max range, um, yep. that Nazhorn ain't going to be lasting for very long. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know he will. We, we all know how this works. <laughs> well, 16 to 8 means 10 minutes left on the clock, which means that Kurz is going to have to deal with the full brunt of the Maverick income before he gets to the late game. But if he can get into Phase C, and he's still in a good position, Vanguard does have a good chance to finish this off. 
I mean, the long, long game technically favors him. Not by much. It's 100 points every 10 minutes, but it's still favoring. M2A1 in the center, pushing forward, catching out this leader a little bit. These things are just so obnoxious. If you have no way to just easily kill them, they can be such a pain to deal with. Yak 9B forced off up north. A lot of infantry actually here in the town. More T-34s. The Tiger, your best weapon here to kill off these tanks. Uh, if that dies, though, then you're actually in a lot of trouble. You don't really have a great way to kill these T-3485s. Yep. Cherno, Sapele coming in. Loads of Sapele docks for the center. Because I think has kind of splurged his decent close-range infantry in the early game. Because he's got... He had the card of Sapoli, he had the card of Tankos. Now all he's got left really is the Avtos that are coming in. So the Sapoli docks should dominate the center for the rest of the game. Which is going to be really, really difficult for Curse to deal with in terms of like overall flag control for the rest of the map. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that for sure. Unless he can find another way of like pinning down the Sapoli docks before he engages them with the Avtos, he could be in trouble. Yeah, Avtos are really disappointing infantry units they're really not very good oh tiger versus t3485 up north gets a damage transmission gets an apcr pen t3476 trying to move forward to help oh, oh no crew the crew panic, panic. <laughs> oh the frustration oh no panic. oh now it dies goes <sighs> down as well the t3485 still managing to get the shot off first even though it had less veterancy because of the inherent rate of fire being higher that was disgusting new t tiger coming in immediately on the bottom side and the going yeah. for the is2 but not managing to land any significant hits and the 85 mil didn't take a single hit either so unfortunate waste of rockets there for curse maybe obviously maybe not a waste in the sense that it, it was worth a try but um not really an effective strike Still holding the 16-8, though. He's holding on order to this double tick. Now down to 7 minutes. SU-88, though, versus... Oh, no, I thought it was going after T-3045. The SU-76 is attempting that and is failing miserably and is now dead. Yeah, the T-3485, they're just landing two solid hits. Uh, I think the SU-88 did manage to pick off a transport, but look at the armor investment on this top side. You've got two T-3485 1944s coming in, an IS-2 there, and now two Strafniki. Ugh. It's uh, going to be disgusting to deal with. Sorry, SU-88 here does get a pen on the T-3045 and the 85 misses. So the SU-88, you know, thankfully lives because that's really his only way now to actually kill this IS-2 like with any sort of consistent success. A Yak-9, I think, was planning to go for a running strike here on the SU-88, but obviously the 37 mil turning that away. The Yak-9 on the top side also failed. Now, one way that I think... Oh no! Can be overrun here is, is by numbers. These Avtos yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are completely de demolishing the Sapati Rocks because it's three to one. Uh, so, so maybe he can do that throughout the game to deal with those Sapati Rocks. And I don't think there are as many Sapati Rocks available overall. So, um, maybe he can uh -oh. just use that to deal with them. But oh, the Yak did manage oh. to get his bombing strike off this time. That's a double pin and a kill. And uh, it looks like uh, Onord here has has wrapped around some Sapity Rocks and is now grabbing two cheeky flags from Kurz, although Kurz still on the double tick. IL-2 uh, cluster up north. Did it, it kill It killed the IS-2. Yeah, the IS-2943 oh. has gone down. Uh, we're also going to see the Tiger penetrate one of these T-3485s and now the Boston bombing run coming in as well, which might be able to finish it off if it lands on target. Well, it bounces on the other. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, the Tiger just landed a shot there before that bombing strike landed, so nicely done. But the Boston taking a lot of damage from these 85 mils in the meantime. Will a last shot take it out? Yes, it will. Oh, oh that is devastating. But I think Kurz here, if he manages to clean up this little salient behind him with a couple of Sapelli Rocks, uh, he might be sitting on a nice chunk of flags. The T-3485 on the top going down as well to the Tiger now. At that is two lovely T-34 kills, slowly but surely breaking down the armor that Onord has invested his Phase B income into as we move into Phase C. So this is actually pretty crazy because Kurz here on the Vanguard income now has the income advantage back in his favor. Admittedly, uh, Onord will have the overall points advantage for the next couple minutes at least. Uh, so he does have that to work with. 
but he just has to try and form some sort of coherent front line because at the moment things are all over the place yeah and down south he's holding on by a like by a thread uh, these units are only alive because they're hiding, essentially. Once one of these infantry discover this Strelki or this Cherno, they're going to die. The flag will go down. He's, I mean, and he needs this double tick. Uh, I still think Onord kind of has the the advantage of troops on the field in terms of, like, armor down south and stuff. Notice all that's left here is the SU-88. Uh, the Tiger up north, definitely a good unit here. The Sapity Rock's about to wipe out this Avto. More Avto's coming in. Uh... No, double Avto can kill the Sapity Rock. These these front lines are so confusing. <laughs> yeah. it's it, The thing is, as well, is that I think overall, quality-wise, Onord has the advantage into the late game. Because the, the, where he, he's played Vanguard Kurtz, he's invested a lot of his like early, uh, like like the Tigers and so on. You know, a lot of this stuff's forced to play early. Uh, he did the same with his like close-range infantry, for example. Uh, whereas... Onord is going to be able to get more value out of these 80 points that he's getting every tick. Yeah, and up north now, Kerr is kind of falling apart here in the town. Strafniki, Sapity Rox, just way better than the infantry he's got there. And now, of course, the Tiger's kind of left down in its own here at very close range. Bomber's coming in down south, aisle four. Here comes the Andrusha trying to take it. Oh, it does take oh, out the, the first rocket. Nice. Yeah. He needs to stop this and stop waiting. Okay, he did finally stop it. Uh, so that's nice to be sure. And it looks like the IS-2 went down to, I assume, the SU-88? I don't even know. Yeah, that SU-88 might not be lasting very long, though. <laughs> oh. Double 500 kilogram bomb right on the noggin as the 37 mil was falling back in the meantime. That is really rough. And a huge salient once again. Both these players just, like, driving as deep as they possibly can on either side here m2a1 grabbing some more flags here so it's now 13 11 to nord although certainly not like a you know very heavily defended 13 11 but it's the first time in a while he's been in lead yeah man is striking going down it's going 14 10. the putty on the bottom side might just be annoying against these chernos if they manage to get in range for the he they could probably take out both but uh, unfortunately that not being microed at the moment as i think is focusing elsewhere a little bit worried that there's not really much coming in here to deal with the center of the map. I think uh, maybe we're getting pretty light on troops for Kurs. Uh, if he brought in the card of Avtos in B, he should have enough, in theory, to push out the mid. But we haven't seen them come in yet. BA10M at least, getting rid of that pesky half-track that kept running through the lines. Yeah, that's definitely a win there for sure. I mean, the Avtos are at one star. I don't ever use Avtos. Do they come naturally at one vet, or do they? Did he have to lose troops for that? Uh, he would have to sacrifice, yeah, to get them at one vet. So he probably uh, had I like eight in phase B on a card. Yeah, IL two attempting to get after this IS two, but it is not that lucky. Eighty five mil still here, and here comes double yak B uh, M fifteen out of ammo. Biggest issue with these things, they just run out of ammo so fast. Yeah, it's not even able to help. Strelke, the one-man Strelke squad going down. Ugh. And the Yak-9 oh, might no. actually catch this. It will. Yeah, that's going down. That's that's rough. Oh, and the M15 just died to the T3045. Tiger trying to loop around to get this T3045, but it's just showing all kinds of side armor and Oh, stuff. this is really bad, because I know it can put the flamer on the T on the Tiger. Force its inaccuracy, push it with the T3485. This could get really ugly. Ooh. Oh, the Panzer Shrek killed though. <laughs> yeah. But are the Safari Rocks gonna kill the tiger? That is the question. <laughs> they definitely could. On the bottom, things are getting cleaned up quite rapidly, but that tiger's not in a fun position. No, I, and Kurz needs to get one unit down to grab this flag down south for sure. Yak 9 gonna kill that BA 10. That was a actually really key unit. It could have killed some of these Safari oh. Rocks. Tiger running, he's on the run. He at, he's finally out of range, but the Strafniki have a rear shot on the with the PTRS. Well, is that enough? I don't even know. No, no it's, it's not. not a rear <laughs> shot. He's not. reversing yeah. away from it. Oh, is he? I can see. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, the 18-6, though, in favor of Onor. The, this, this aircraft has really come up clutch in the late game. These Yak-9Bs have been absolutely crucial throughout and now the T the 37 mil is going to die on the bottom side opens up even more potential bombing strikes but the yak 9 coming in for the bombing strike onto the tiger might actually kill it after the damage from the flamer or oh, not quite 
IL-2 is going to just continue to strafe it though and make it completely ineffective. T-34 in the mid, going to be able to clean up some of these Sepodia rocks at least because they don't have any AT. Yeah, and it's, it's ironic because we talked about um, 43rd having terrible AA, but it would appear that it's uh, Kurz's AA that has really come up short here. Indeed. Yeah, the M15s, like you said, running out of ammo. He also did lose one getting it in line of sight on the top side, uh, but never really invested in the bottom side. Like, he does have 37 mil AA, and that is usually enough. Um, but he has brought them in that, like, two vet, and they're also coming in with the Zis 42, which is odd. Like, I feel like that's just him rushing the yeah. deck building. Yeah, that's definitely what that is. IS-2 takes out the Tiger up north, and Kurz decides that's that. Yeah, I feel like Kurz just kind of ran out of quality stuff to invest his points into, whilst the 43rd was, like, much deeper in that regard. Like, still had the straffs uh, invested in, still had extra T-34s, IS-2s, things like that, that he could invest those extra points into. And then he still had his Air Force at his back that hadn't really been dealt with throughout the entire game, so it just continued to gain, uh, like, more and more value as it went throughout. But yeah, 27 minutes, 22 seconds later, Kurz is going to surrender, which gives 2-0 to O'Nord, and he is going to win the third place final. So congratulations, O'Nord takes third place in the Still Division League Season 9. Commiseration scares. Yeah, I mean, congrats to O'Nord. It was a good game from Kurz. I mean, he really, I mean, he had a triple tick, like, pretty early in the game and, and held it for a good chunk of time. Uh, it just kind of fell out from under him. I, I know the feeling well. Uh, you know, these things seem to be going well, and then they're just not, you know, and then... And, when you're playing with these players in Division One, that's what happens. I mean, you're just players are very, very good. They're good at trading, and and you think things are going well. You keep pushing, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like your trades went worse than you thought, and you're down points. And I don't. I'm trying to do the math in my head. I'm pretty sure Vanguard income like does not equal out with Maverick until like the 40 minute mark or something like that, uh, because you're that far down. You're only getting 10 extra points a tick, so it's not like a lot. Yeah. Um. So you're, you're basically down the whole game to start. I, I personally think Maverick is a nice counter to Vanguard because you just end up with more points and you can kind of squash their early play with your Maverick with your Maverick income. But yeah, I mean, SU-88 got some nice kills. That definitely did quite well, a lot better than Nashorns often do. Um, you know, we definitely see some good trades, some good kills out of here for Kurs, much better than the last game for sure. Uh, but again, we go over to... Onord, and we see some T3045s doing really well, KV1S, the, those planes just absolutely decimating. Uh, you know, this 45 mil killing what? What is that? Almost 200 points of stuff? Uh, that's tough. That's that's rough when that happens. Yeah, some of these things got a lot of value, and the 85 mil AA piece is not only getting their like, air suppression down, but also finding kills. Um, BA10M, T34, 1942, like a couple of like an infantry squad and OB getting killed by one of the 85 mils. So, like, getting more than he bargained for with those. Well, the T34 85s in general uh, really, really showed up in this game. And um, apart from using the Tigers to kill those, it, or maybe like trying to use the SU 85s at close range, it's quite difficult. And I think, honestly, him losing his like Panzerdreck early on the top side was was really detrimental to that push because it, it would have been one of the keys to breaking down the armor that was in his way to get a lot of ground early on. Yeah, I agree. The KV-1Ss are actually really good in towns. They're, they're you know, pretty chunky armor-wise, so they can actually bounce shells even at closer range. And, you know, they do enough penetration themselves. They, they lay down some good fire with their DTs and everything. I, I really like KV-1. And they're cheap. They're, what, 60 points, I believe? Yeah, they are um, cheap. You know, so for armor, for honestly pretty heavy armored support, they're, they're quite strong. And yeah, I mean, I love T-3045s. I find them to be very efficient, you know, 110 points. Are they incredible? No, but they, they do quite well against most other medium armor. Uh, I mean, I think Kurz could have used a little bit of artillery to break down some of these 85 mils and stuff, but when he would have bought that, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe that could have helped him out because these 85 mils did a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, he didn't invest like crazy heavily into the air, right? He only bought like a couple Bostons at the end of the day. Um, so I don't think they were like a huge factor, uh, other than obviously, you know, they did support the ground more than you'd expect them to. Um, but I think that mainly comes from like the SU-122s getting killed off and then like the 85s are free at that point. Yeah. Um, 
and and in general that that's how the game went uh Kurz went for the vanguard he brought in the su88 early he brought in the su122s early i think he even brought in the tigers in phase a um or at least one of them um early on and yeah they just they just got broken down and as soon as those are gone like that's the majority of the value of bazooka taken care of um same with his infantry as well so yeah anyway that is it for now anything else you'd like to add no great game to Nord. pulling out third place good for him sorry to curse I, th- I thought he had a great season really enjoyed him in the group phase and everything so sorry to him but uh yeah great games to both players yeah so yeah again cr- congratulations to Nord third place we'll be moving on to the final next uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one Oh, and hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. (laughs) Goodbye.